Distortion. Ukrainians morally prepared for election fraud. Fake. Ukrainian National Railway runs out of fuel. Weaponizing news. RT, Sputnik, and targeted disinformation. These are the stories we debunk for you this week, and this is Stop Fake, the place where we set the record straight on fakes about Ukraine. I'm Marco Supran, so let's get to it. Pro-Kremlin media featured stories this week claiming that the Ukrainian National Railway, Ukrzaliznitsya, had run out of fuel. Rambler, Ukraina.ru, Donetsk24, and others all cited an alleged telegram signed by an Ukrzaliznitsya board member which states that urgent measures to save fuel must be taken because the centralized supply of diesel is temporarily stopped. Stopfake asked Ukrzaliznitsya whether the company was really running out of fuel and would be forced to roll back rail traffic. According to Ukrzaliznitsya Operations Director Vyacheslav Aramin, the company currently has enough fuel in stock for 10 days, with deliveries due to cover fuel needs for additional weeks. The company has more than enough fuel for an uninterrupted month's work. Adamin told Stopfake that existing contracts with fuel suppliers ensure that future deliveries will guarantee Ukrzaliznitsya's uninterrupted and stable operations. Ukrzaliznitsya has extended the deadline for its fuel tenders until March 11 in order to study the price dynamics on the diesel market. The company is using the national Prozoro procurement system to ascertain what other state entities, such as the Defense Ministry and Ukraine's ports, are paying for diesel. Perhaps it was this deadline extension that prompted Russian media to claim that the Ukrainian carrier was out of fuel. Russian propaganda site Ukraina.ru announced this week that according to recent polling, the majority of Ukrainians are demoralized and do not believe the upcoming presidential elections will be honest. Ukraina.ru twists the poll results to conclude that Ukrainians are morally prepared for election fraud. This assertion is a gross distortion of the actual poll results. Election fraud, violations and falsifications are constant themes in Russian narratives about the upcoming presidential elections intended to cast doubt on their very legitimacy. The poll conducted by the Social Monitoring Center and the Ukrainian Institute for Social Research in February on the electoral mood on the eve of the presidential elections does not show that the Ukrainian public is overwhelmingly anticipating election fraud. Asked if they had personally encountered any violations of the right to vote, 45.5% said they had not encountered any such violations, while almost 16% were undecided. Responding to the question, how do you think elections will be held as a whole, 35% said there will be violations, but they will not affect the overall result. 31% answered there will be significant violations and that they will significantly affect the result. Meanwhile, 18% said everything would be rigged, while 6% thought the elections would be free and fair and without fraud. And typically, 11% of the respondents found the question difficult to answer. A few weeks ago, the Policy Institute and the Center for the Study of Media Communication and Power at King's College in London published a report about how the Kremlin's media machine manipulates the news in an effort to capture elite thinking. The report, entitled Weaponizing News, RT, Sputnik and Targeted Disinformation, is written by Dr. Gordon Ramsay and Dr. Sam Robertshaw, is available online and includes a case study of Ukrainian news that was done together with Texty.org.ua, an agency that focuses on database journalism. Ramsey and Robertshaw found that Russian media have three go-to instruments to capture your thinking. They flood the zone, meaning that they literally flood the information sphere with alternative facts and contradictory narratives like what happened after the 2018 nerve agent attack on Sergei Skripal and his daughter in Salisbury by two members of Russia's military intelligence, the GRU. RT and Sputnik published 138 separate and contradictory narratives about the Skripal poisoning in 735 articles in the four weeks following the incident, incorporating the views of a parallel commentariat and amplifying Russian government sources. The second tool is called Projecting Russian Strength. Articles are published by RT and Sputnik that allege Western military weakness alongside Russian military strength, which Ramsey and Robertshaw called Heads We Win, Tails You Lose. The third and final tool is division and dysfunction. These are narratives that highlight political and institutional failures, exacerbate and create social divisions, 
and very often highlight the threat of immigration. Using a forensic approach to their study, the authors discovered that news organizations in the UK republish content from RT and Sputnik, and then conveniently the Kremlin media again republish the same content. There's a good chance that the media about Russia that you consume in English is most likely from the Kremlin's factory of lies. Weaponizing news, RT, Sputnik, and targeted disinformation is the first comprehensive study of how RT and Sputnik sow confusion and division in the UK and beyond. It is based on an analysis of nearly 12,000 articles published in English by the two outlets and over 150,000 online articles by UK news outlets. The articles were collected between May and June 2017 and in March 2018 in the immediate aftermath of the Skripal poisoning. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.